Good evening, everybody. So, hi, Ruth. So, it is Sunday, the 15th of January, and this is our weekly area training. And we've got three absolutely spectacular trainers this evening. And I just want to say a massive well done for everybody that has gone on to the call tonight. It is Sunday night, as usual. You guys are the cream of the crop, making time to plug into your weekly online training. You're in the top 3%, so massive well done for that. So, I hope everybody has had a fantastic week this week, and um, I can't wait to hear all about it at the end. Um, so, first of all, I'm going to introduce our first trainer. So it is Heidi. So Heidi is our fabulous, gorgeous mother of three, lives in Melton Mowbray, the same as myself. And myself and Heidi first met when we were both volunteers on the breastfeeding support program. That's where we first met one another. And Heidi contacted me to find out what this little business was I was doing a few years ago and met up and explained it all to her and she jumped straight in, which is great. So I've got to personally see Heidi grow from, I'm sure she won't mind me saying this, but not having a lot of confidence to absolutely flourishing. She used to always be there hiding behind her whiteboard, didn't want to really say much. And yeah, there she is. <laughs> and over time, she just literally like, like an eagle, just come out of herself and actually like, offers to train now she's like oh I'll do that I'll do that and she's one of the most helpful people Heidi is incredibly helpful incredibly kind and I'm really looking forward to her training tonight because I know she's put a lot of effort into this and she was practicing this the other day with myself and Emma so she's going to train tonight on why some people take action and some people don't because there can be hundreds of people in the same room at the same time listening to the same information that's going to help them move forward in life, whatever it is, whether it's losing weight, being a better parent, a better spouse, building a business. There can be so many people listening to the same information at the same time, but why is it that when they leave, some of them take action and some of them don't? But they were there listening to the same information. That doesn't make sense. So Heidi's going to train tonight on why. Why some people take action and why some people don't. So I'm really looking forward to this because it's going to be really interesting for everybody um, in all areas of your life. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome Digital Manager Heidi Barrow. My daughter. She just wants to lie. She wants to Hello everyone. Oh, sorry, I just forgot my trusty whiteboard. So I had to leg it downstairs. I'm a little bit puffed out now. <laughs> okay, so yeah, as Danny says, um, I'm gonna have my notes here so I don't get myself lost and go off on a tangent. So I'm quite good at that. Um, I'm just gonna talk tonight about um, how to take action. So like Danny says, why some people do and why some people don't. Because we all start in the same, the same place with the same information. Oh, so yeah, thanks Danny for asking me to train tonight because I really do enjoy training and anyone that's thinking, oh God, I could never train, do it because it boosts your confidence, seriously. <laughs> the only reason I'm where I am because Danny made me do training. <laughs> so yeah, I've prepared um, my training tonight on a video that Danny actually shared on the Do More page. Um, and it really, really struck a chord with me. So Danny says, oh, why don't you train on this? And I sort of watched it again. And I was like, no, that's brilliant. Because it really, really resonated with me. <coughs> Sorry, I've got a bit of a tickle today. So do you look at others that are running this business or even doing something else in life that you'd love to do and watch them and they're just so successful and they're really, really doing well with something? And you think, well, what are they doing? What's their secret? Why have, why have they got so much success? And I can't do it. Um, and maybe you're comparing yourself or even comparing someone that you're supporting. Because that's um, a big thing in my eyes. A lot of the support around us is really, really important to our success. And if that support doesn't understand how success is built, um, how can they really support us? So we all have people that think they're being supportive and they're really actually not. And my favourite was actually my mother <laughs> and her famous saying, as, which was, uh, that's great, I'm really pleased for you, but don't rely on it. 
And that was her favorite thing. Every time sort of I did something good, but don't rely on it. So it was always sort of pushing me down. She thought she was being helpful, but actually she was pushing me down and making me stop do acti- doing activity. So um, I'm sure we've all been uh, one of those people at some point as well that says, yeah, I'll do it, I'll do it. And then when it actually comes to it, we're like, oh, no, I can't. Or I don't want to. Um, yeah, and some, but some people just do it. They do everything. They do absolutely everything. How do they have the energy? How do they do it all? How? What gives them the edge? What do they have that I don't? And then some people don't do anything. And then suddenly they're doing everything. And you think, well, what, what changed? What gives them that transition? So a huge, huge thing that stops people doing things is fear. We all know it. The fear of failing, the fear of disappointment. Um, the thing that successful people fear is not doing it, not getting the life that they want, not achieving their dreams, not achieving the success they want. That's their fear. So it doesn't... So overachievers, they're not afraid of what happens. They're not afraid of the outcome. They're afraid that they're not going to they're not going to make their dream. They want to do it. So they just do whatever it takes. Um, so remember the feeling. Think back to whether it's um, went into qual when you've promoted. You've messaged someone on your chicken list, and they actually said, "Yeah, let me know. let me know. I want to know more about that." Something like that. As soon as you have to take that one step further, you feel alive, you feel the buzz, and that's what that's what pushes you forwards. So you might not have that. Oh, is it? Let me have a check. Yeah, keep going though. It's all right. Okay. Okay, if it gets really bad, just drop a message in the chat. Okay. Um yeah, so if you haven't had that feeling yet, or it was a really, really long time ago, and you perhaps forgot what it feels like, um, how do you get it back? Or how do you get it back without um, actually hitting absolute rock bottom? If you hit rock bottom, it becomes a need instead of a want. And that's when people start to sort of get desperate and panic and things. So how do we get that feeling back before we hit that rock bottom? So we have to condition our minds. Firstly, we need to get into a daily ritual. So you'll all have seen the tracker, hopefully. And that is a really, really good daily ritual. The top bit of the tracker is just a fabulous daily ritual that takes a maximum of an hour. And everyone can fit that in at some point, whether it's a whole or whether it's just little snippets during the day. Everyone can fit an hour's worth in. Um, at some point during the day so get into a daily ritual maybe maybe just start with one thing maybe just start by reading 10 pages a day fit that in somewhere during your day um then maybe start with an audio the next week add an audio in so you're doing these 10 pages that's in your routine and then put an audio in and listen to that whether it be on the way to work or um wherever you have half an hour or 20 minutes or something um but make sure that you're in a conscious state of mind. So make sure that you're listening. Make sure that it's not just there in the background or you're sort of half reading the pages but not taking it in because you need to take it in to make sure that you're going to implement this new information into your life. Um, and the other thing is stick to one subject a week. This is one thing he says, stick to one subject a week. So maybe the first week would be how to build a client base. Maybe the second week would be how to prospect. Maybe the third week could be um, running online events. Just think how many subjects you'll have covered after 52 weeks. After 52 weeks of the year, how many subjects you'll have completed in that year and how much closer to your goal you're going to be. Um, For successful people, it's not about the money. It's about the achievement. The money is a byproduct of that achievement. For example, if you work your business and you build a client base, so you do your first week... um, so first subject and you build a client base. you learn how to build a client base the next week you next week you b- start building that client base then um the qv will naturally come because you're building a client base and then after that um in turn that turns into promotions and it turns into money so the actual success the achievement is um what the successful people are actually after they're not after the money they're not after the qvs and things they're actually after that success and in um 
like the money and everything is a byproduct of that. So the real success is the skills you learn and how you use them. Um, and then another thing that they say is you need a role model. So find someone who is where you want to be. So whether it be an MVP, whether it be your area manager, your district manager, whoever it is, find a role model. Because if you do what they do, you'll be where they are. It's quite, it's that simple. So find their story, learn what they do, learn their daily rituals, learn everything about them. No stalking, no over the top stalking, but just find out what it is they do. And if you do exactly what they do every single day, you'll be where they are. So condition your mind into thinking differently. Don't look for opportunities as such. Look for skills to learn. Use others' experiences. Um, follow people and watch them and learn from them. Learn what they do. If you're lucky enough that your role model is um, your sponsor or someone close to you, then that's fabulous because you can watch exactly what they're doing. Just copy them and you'll be the same place. You'll just follow them um, wherever you go, wherever they go. Obviously, unless they're not doing anything, they don't. <laughs> so, yeah, create a ritual every single day and stick to it. No matter what, schedule the time into your routine and make that your, I must do this tomorrow. As important as I must pay the rent tomorrow, I must do this tomorrow. Make it that important in your day. Um, if It's all about being hungry for success. And if you're not hungry for success, get around people who are because it will rub off on you. So, you know, when you go into a coffee shop and you think, oh, just pop in and get a quick, uh, a quick decaf tea or coffee, you're being good. And then you see the cakes and you smell the cakes and everyone around you is eating the cakes and you're like, I'll just buy a cake. And you eat, you have a cake as well. It's, it's like that. You go in and if everyone else is doing it and it's all around you, you will naturally absorb it. So what is this holy grail that makes the rich richer and the poor poorer? So I've got my dusty little whiteboard. I haven't used one of these in so long in a train and it's quite exciting. <laughs> so let me draw my four squares before. Oh, should have drawn these before, shouldn't I? It's a bit silly. There we go. Right, so we've got four boxes and this is going to create our holy grail. So in the first box, we have potential. So in this first box here, I'm sure you can't read that one actually. I'm done writing. But this box here, I promise you, it does say potential. So, what is potential? This is what decides if it's possible or not. So, network marketing, we know it works. Arbon, we know it works. We know the products work. We know the products sell. We've, we see it every day in our newsfeed and everything that this, this company works and network marketing works. So, the potential is there. So, the potential is no different for anybody. The potential is there. Um, action is the next one. So the next one, we have action here. So we have the potential, our ID numbers. The next one is action. Um, and this is what a person does with the potential. So they have the potential. If they take action, it's here. So this is the action that they take. It's really that simple. Then we have results. So this is the results. So we take the action and we get our results. And the next one in the last box is belief. So we get the results and this obviously um, cements our belief. So it's our belief in it's our belief in the potential. So it's our belief in the company, it's our belief in the uh, business itself, and it's our belief in ourselves, which is I think for a lot of people that is the big one is the actual belief in yourself because you can see the network marketing works and you can see our one works but it's just whether you think you can do it or not that is a massive thing so all these four boxes link to one another and they all directly affect one another so if someone has their potential they've bought their id number they've got access to all the same training the source they've got an upline they've got mvps to follow rvps to follow they've got everything they've got the potential it's there ready so then they pop over to the action box and they don't do anything with the, their business. They don't do anything at all. So their results aren't really anything. So their belief in the company is like, oh, it doesn't work. I'm not getting, I'm not earning anything. So it doesn't, it doesn't work. 
it's rubbish. So their belief goes down and their belief in the company, their belief in the, um, in the business as well. So someone else, they also on the same day bought their ID number. Okay, so they bought their potential and then they went out and they did everything. They trained daily, they learned their skills, they did their daily ritual, they read, they went to events and everything. And their belief grows. Okay, but their results are um, their results are fantastic. They directly from their actions. They've taken lots of action, they've got big results, bingo. Um, and then the belief, they're really, really excited, their belief grows, their belief in the company and their products and themselves, they're really, really rocking now. So it goes back round again, so they take more action because they're excited now, they can see it really, really, they can see the results coming. And they get, more and they get bigger results and their belief grows again and it's just a cycle and they end up being an MVP. Whereas the first person, it didn't work, they give up, that's it, the end. So... The fact is, they, they all had, well, they both had the same potential. They both had exactly the same thing to start with. No one starts off any better, any higher, any lower. Everyone starts off in exactly the same place. So if you believe there's little potential, you'll take little action. If you take little action, you won't get the results. If you don't get the results, that's going to dampen your belief. So if you believe in the potential, you will take action, you will get results, and your belief will grow. So essentially, the first person is the poorer person getting poor, uh, the poor person getting poorer, and then the second one, obviously, is the rich person getting richer. So um, it's all in the mindset. It's okay saying, "Oh yeah, I believe in, I believe in R one, I believe in uh, network marketing," but you you really need to believe it. You need to feel it. You need to know and be certain that this, because this is what gets you through the times where you do all the action. But the results, for some reason, that time didn't come. But your belief needs to be certain. You need to be 100% know that you're going to get the results next time. Um, yeah, so it's the certainty that just keeps you carrying on, taking the action. Even when you get the no's and things, it's the certainty that carries, keeps you going. Um, so how do we produce this certainty? When the world isn't giving it to us. So in the midst of the no's, in the lack of belief around you, so maybe it's lack of support, um, what, how do you keep going and how do we build this certainty? So it's not the potential. Hang on, my board's upside down now. It's not the potential because that's there. We know that's there, that's always there. Um, it's not the action because if you're doing that, then you're going to be getting the results. So what we need to be doing is looking and saying, right, okay, these are the results I'm getting. They're not great, but what they could be is 40,000 QV. So I like to be doing 40,000 QV. That's what, that's what I can see. I will be doing 40,000 QV or 150,000 QV if you go straight to MVP. Um, so this is what you need to be seeing the results. You need to be knowing that they're there and watching RBPs and seeing and cementing that belief that the results are there, the results are there, you're just gonna keep going and they'll come. Um, and just lastly, really, so set your goals and believe that you're already there and go from there. So it's really, really easy to be a, skept a skeptic and say um, all the excuses under the sun why you can't, it's failure. Straight away, it's failure. As soon as you say, oh, I don't know, that's it, you sort of failing. What the hard bit is, is stepping up. The hard bit is doing it. The hard bit is going through that fear and doing it anyway. Seeing the disappointment, turning it into drive. Don't see it as a failure. Seeing, right, okay, well, that's fine. We'll carry on and we'll do it again. And this time we'll succeed. That's the hard bit. The easy bit is saying, oh, no, I can't. That's, oh, it's not working for me. That's really, really easy because you're just, you're not pushing yourself forward. So fail forwards, figure it out. And as long as you keep learning, and you keep doing, you'll keep moving forward. Every single day that you do your rituals, every single day that you take action, you'll move one step closer to your goal. Every day that you don't, you're just going to stay where you are. So just think, every day that you miss your rituals or something, think, well, today I didn't get any closer to my goals, which will then boost you and say, right, okay, we need to get on this. So the next day, you'll probably, you'll probably do it because you feel guilty for not doing it the day before. So yeah, believe, take the action, you'll see the results, your belief will grow even more and do this every single day. And that's it. <laughs>
fantastic Heidi and I've just put in the chat you can really feel your energy as well and I really think what you should do is find one of your early trainings that you did a couple of years ago when you first became an album because I went no no it's good it's good to share with everybody how far you've come and you are the yeah. pinnacle for saying to people it doesn't matter how you start in this business like you can grow and you can you know um grow that confidence and grow that ability yeah. to deliver such fabulous trainings because you've come so far haven't you I have yeah definitely because if you'd have said to me probably if, if you'd have said to me two years ago and said right do this training on Sunday I've been like oh, no and I've probably gone into witness protection but now I'm like yeah yeah I'll do it I'll do it what do you want me to do and then and I, you want to do it and it's you just have to do it you just have to get over that fear and have your jarries on underneath put a jump on so it looks like you haven't but happy jar is on underneath, so you <laughs> you're comfy and just I've got mine on. I'm a god with scrubs on underneath, but I thought I'll put a jump on a bit of makeup, bring the hair up. But yeah, you just you just have to get out there and do it. And the training that I watched, it's by Tony Robbins. Um, go and watch it and re-watch it or re-watch this and see which one sort of resonates with you more. Because I watched it and it just blew me away. And I've been in this business for like a couple of years now. But I, that really, really hit me because I'm one of the people that's in the grey area that don't do much. And that's, I've been in this cycle as a negative, like as the negative. So do it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It was good. It was a great training. Really great to see out of those four sort of quadrants where we need to be focusing. Why are we going to that cycle? Because we all do. We're all guilty of it in all areas of our life, whether it's our yeah. parenting area, trying to be healthy area, work area, being married area. You know, we all go into that cycle and it's like being in that hamster wheel. And it's like, no, where do I need yeah. to start to, to make a change? So that that was fabulous what you did, Heidi. Yeah, it, it does just show you how what a tiny little thing can just end up in a massive spiral that if you just change one little thing, like one little, your belief in something, if you say, yeah, I can do it, then you, you're going, you're starting off well. If you say I can't, you're going to go the opposite way and it's just like the lines going apart, the rich and the poor, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Very much, Heidi. Fabulous. Thank you. Okay, so next up we have our very gorgeous Laura. So Laura Shenery lives in Kings Lynn and she is the absolute pinnacle. And I know I just said that about Heidi, but she really is the most beautiful soul. And I was I messaged Laura earlier and I was like, Laura, everything that you've set your sights on, you put so much love and devotion and passion into it. And she really does. Like, it doesn't matter what, what it is. She's got little 18-month-old Ella and she's the most wonderful mother. She is married to Adam and she's the most incredible, incredible wife. Her house is beautiful. Like, you can see she's really invested her time and energy and love into everything. And she's just set up a room in her house as a um, at-home therapy place because she's a beauty therapist in a salon, but she's going to also start working from home as well. And the pictures that she's put on her face Facebook, if anyone's seen are beautiful and I was like gosh I was like you really really do put your love into everything that you do and she's just absolutely an incredible and incredible human being and we're very very lucky I'm very lucky and we're very lucky to have Laura and for her to be training tonight because like anything her standards are just so high really 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 are and I wish that I'd been a bit more like Laura when I first started this business but I'm sure she'll probably save everybody you know it is just a case of growing and Laura really dedicates herself to personal growth and growing within herself so any Anybody can be where you want to be with that perseverance and Laura is perseverance through and through. So Laura Shenery is going to train tonight on our calm range of products. Can everyone hear me okay? I just want to check my speakers on. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, brilliant. Thanks Danny, that was so nice. When people say things like that, it's like, oh. <laughs> Um, what I'm going to do, so I am going over the Calm products, but what I also want to do, excuse the telly in the background, what I also want to do is talk about sensitive skin most importantly, because when you understand the different types of skin, um, then everything else is easy. So with a sensitive skin, that is a really, really important thing to understand. There's a massive difference between somebody having a sensitive skin and somebody having 
uh, an allergy. So many times in the industry, I get people come in and say, oh, I've got really sensitive skin. But when you delve a little deeper and you find out what their current skincare routine is, in my head, I'm thinking, yeah, I'm not surprised. But obviously, to them, I wouldn't say that. Um, but yeah, so what we would always say, always, always start with sensitivity. If somebody has a sensitive skin, don't put them on anything else other than the Calm Range to um, heal their skin. Because sensitive skin isn't something that we're born with it's actually something that's caused throughout our lives and um lots of people can have allergies to things if you have a genuine allergy then that is different to having a sensitive skin type so with a sensitive skin your skin becomes sensitive when you break down your acid mantle your acid mantle is something that your skin naturally produces and it's an, a protection for your skin so it's like a, a shield for your skin if you like and also it's when your ph balance becomes uh, disrupted as well that's when you can then start to feel that your skin can go quite tight and then you can be prone to anything you put on feeling quite itchy and quite uncomfortable and there's lots of other um, symptoms as well with a sensitive skin so i have written down a few because i do tend to waffle on sometimes and then i forget what i'm saying so um uh, <laughs> sensitive skin is can be caused by medication medication is a massive contribution to having a sensitive skin because it can really change our hormones it can you know it can put stress in the body it's not something natural that we would take every day so medication is something we're adding to our bodies and that's something that can cause a sensitive skin the second thing is lifestyle, massively, massively lifestyle. Somebody drinks a lot of alcohol, if somebody smokes a lot, you know, if somebody's very much outdoors, they play golf a lot. Again, all of those elements outside, the sun is always there. You've got your UVA rays, which is your aging rays, and that can cause a lot of damage to the skin as well. 90% of aging is actually caused by the sun. So there's another little tip there for you as well. Um, yeah, so I've covered the pH and the acid mantle and the elements. And again, one of the massive, massive contributions to a sensitive skin is incorrect skincare. When people don't use the correct skincare, that's when they can get damaged. And I find this a lot that people think they've got an oily skin. And actually, because we're a cold country, um, it might surprise a lot of you, but an oily skin is really, really uncommon. A lot of people diagnose themselves with an oily skin because they have a shine. But actually, we did something called face mapping. I don't know if any of you ever heard of that before, but we actually offer that in the salon. And it's where you have a machine. It's like a laptop and a machine with like lots of little probes and you basically put them on the skin and you measure the levels of oil in the skin and I've had to use that numerous times to say to people like who said no I really have a greasy t-zone I've said honestly I promise you it's a water shine and then they've used we've used the machine on them and they've actually had zero levels of oil in their skin and they've gone oh my god like everything I thought I knew was wrong you know like crikey so then they've um, tried hydration because what happens with our skin? So when your uh, pH, pH balance becomes incorrect or when the acid mantle starts to break down, it happens a lot. Like I say, it can happen over medication. It can happen with lifestyle. It can happen off elements, anything. And when that starts to happen, what happens is our skin becomes very stressed and it becomes very raw because that shield isn't there to protect it. So what happens is your skin is kind of like, oh, you know, I really need to protect myself. And there's nothing there to protect it. So what it does, it uses all of the water that it's got to push up to the surface, to lubricate the surface of your skin. And that is water. That is what that shine is on the T-zone. And nine times out of 10, I'll guarantee you that it is a dehydration water shine rather than oily shine. Um, a lot of oily skins tend to be like hotter countries. So um, you're looking at like Africa, places like that, you know, then they really can have quite... Um, oily skins so they can be more prone to keloid scarring so there's another little thing there as well um and it's so frustrating sometimes because like when you're trying to diagnose people online like and i'll say to them they're like no no, no i definitely have an oily skin i'm like i know what you're saying because i was exactly the same and it wasn't until i used something with hyaluronic acid and i hydrated my skin and i fed my skin and you know that that was that so we'd always always say start with soothing always protect their skin but ask them questions 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 it's so so important so when you're doing your consultation it's all about questions ask them what they're currently using if anybody tells you they're using clinique then that has got so much alcohol in it let me tell you that in this industry between us ladies a clinique is like the devil literally has horns on the products i'm not even joking that stuff is you even 
Google the ingredients and so many people use it. And even in dermatology clinics, they use it. It's like, what are you doing? Why are you using these horrible products on people? Because they're full of alcohol. And again, alcohol is a massive thing that's going to strip the skin. And that's why so many people, when you try and talk to them about toning their skin, well, I'm not going to put a toner on my skin. I'm not going to do that. Well, yeah, toners are good for your skin. But if you use ones like that, that are going to be full of alcohol, then yeah. And if you're using an oily product for a skin that doesn't have any oil, your skin is going to be so stripped back and it will need the calm range. So you'll start off with that. When they've finished that, move on to something else. And actually, it's good that when you finish your skincare, move on to something else your skin gets used to it it's like your hair how many times do we use shampoo and then after i don't know a couple of days our, our hair looks beautiful doesn't it really really looks good use it after a couple of weeks yes all right use it after a month and it's like okay actually my hair just kind of yeah it's because you get used to it you need to continuously change so when they've healed their skin from the soothing range, they then need to go on to something else. So whether it be for a dry skin, whether it be for um, the FC5 for hydration, whether it be anti-aging, it's good to keep on moving and changing your products just because your skin's smart, so it doesn't get used to it. Um, hydration, I just wanna cover that as well, because I do think if I can cover this with you in this time, it's gonna be really useful for a lot of you. So with hydration, if somebody has that water shine, check if they feel sensitive. If they feel sensitive, go on to calm. If they don't feel sensitive, go straight on to your FC5 for hydration, because a dehydrated skin has massive pores, and we're talking huge pores. And the reason why is because your skin, if you imagine yourself in the desert, and you're literally like, You've been in the desert for two weeks and uh, you're literally doing this uh, and you're crawling across the sand that is what your skin is doing when it's dehydrated it's literally like uh, so your pores are just open have you ever had anyone say oh i've squeezed my blackheads and nothing's coming out well it's because if you imagine this is your skin this is the surface of your skin and those pores are like uh, help literally help me help and then right at the bottom is your blackhead you try and squeeze that you ain't getting nothing out of there if you hydrate your skin and you close your pores and you bring everything up to the top then your blackheads are at the top they'll come out and you will find with a, woo, with a dehydrated skin sorry carried away there you will find with a dehydrated skin that um some some pores will will you know will be squeezable but a lot of them won't and again that's another misconception of people thinking that oily skins have open pores well yeah they do but if you do this, this is a little test for you. Like I have a shine at the moment. Rub your fingers together. Go and get some cooking oil, any cooking oil, and put it in your other finger. That is what an oily skin feels like. This is what a dehydrated skin feels like. So it's just a little bit of knowledge there for you. So secondly, if somebody has a very sensitive skin, then do be careful. Just say to them, you know, when they're washing their face, just make sure that you tell them to be careful of the temperature of the water. If you use a water that's too cold, or if you use a water that's too hot, it's going to oversensitize the skin again, and it's going to cause damage to the skin. So you need to keep the temperature tepid. I always say tepid warm, just lukewarm, just so it's comfortable. And also, when they're drying their skin, do not scrub. Never, ever scrub. Just pat, pat your face dry. It will soon dry. But just don't, I've seen so many people scrubbing their skin and I'm just kind of like having a bit of a heart attack inside. Um, so yeah, just make sure that you, they tap their skin so they're just drying it gently again because it's another thing that can really aggravate the skin because our skin is, you know, our skin's delicate. We need to look after it. The next thing is UV protection. UV protection, as I said earlier, just to cover over that, it's really, really important for a sensitive skin as well and, and every skin type because it will age your skin because the sun's there all year round. It's there in the day, which is why we have the daylight. So the UV rays are still harmful, even though they're not going to burn our skin. They will age it and they will cause premature aging and other problems as well. And there is also free radical damage as well, which the Arbonne products do protect from. And free radicals are little things that we can't see when we're out and about and the elements that attach themselves to our skin and cause a lot of damage and sensitivity again. So provided they've got a good skincare routine, they're going to have protection from that as well. So moving on to the Calm range itself, I'm just going to cover over it just lightly, really. So a way to remember your key ingredients is to spell out calm. So cucumber, aloe, licorice, and mallow. Always remember that. So cucumber, aloe, licorice, and mallow. They are your key ingredients in the products and it spells out calm. So remember, aloe vera, um, or no, actually, I'll start with C, I'll start with cucumber. So cucumber, 
if you imagine when you see people and they've got them over their eyes it's because it creates a really good cooling effect so it's really good for uh, dark circles puffiness and with a sensitive skin puffiness is something um, that your skin um, obviously can have you can get inflammation it's just in a message it's just disappeared hang on let me have a look what did it say no, I can't see it. I can't see the message that you just sent. But what I'll do, if you've got any questions, just inbox me and I can help you with those. Um, so that's why cucumber's in it. And cucumber's really, really important for cooling and soothing. It does give instant relief to a, to a um, sensitive skin. Aloe vera. So it's actually a really special part of aloe vera. It's extracted from the aloe vera leaf, which is the purest form of aloe vera that you can get. I don't know if anyone's ever went into gardening or anything and they've had an aloe vera plant. You can literally crack the plant and out comes your, um, your aloe vera. It's really beautiful. You can put it straight on the skin neat and it's the most healing thing that you can put on your skin. Aloe vera is well renowned for its healing effects. It is incredible. So aloe vera leaf extract. Um, so yeah, very powerful healing properties and then an anti-inflammatory, well known for that um the next thing the licorice so the licorice is also a plant and um it's actually been found to um help collagen production so it is quite good for anti-aging although it's not an anti-aging range i'm not sure if we can really say that just for your records it, it can help with anti-aging in the skin i also saw it does like contain a certain amount of hyaluronic acid i believe so hyaluronic acid is, is our skin's natural water preserve so hyaluronic acid is what your skin has naturally to um to keep its water in it so if you imagine you're putting that in a dehydrated skin or a skin that is a little bit aggravated it's going to do it well wonders absolute wonders so that is that um what else do i put down yeah the other thing i actually found this really interesting and to be honest i didn't know this so the licorice is known to mimic cortisol in the body and cortisol is what is released to respond to stress so again it's really really going to help to beat stress in the body because stress is something that can cause really quite sensitive skin as well when we're stressed you know blood pressure goes up heart rate goes up anxiety anything like that it's going to have an effect on our skin and it does so um it helps with that which i didn't actually know so there's another little one there and then um, lastly, mallow. Mallow is a flower. And again, it's really good for stimulating your um, cell regeneration, which is really, really good because our skin does regenerate itself. But with age, it tends to slow down. Like Danny said before, you know, from the rate of cell turnover from a child to the rate of an adult, it takes much, much longer for our skin to regenerate as we age. So it does help speed that up. So there are some anti-aging properties in there. But again, I don't know if we're allowed to say that, but they, they do anti-age. Um, and it's really, really soothing as well. So it does tend to help to strengthen the skin. So what I would say, if somebody's going to be going onto the Calm range, I would just suggest they use it all. I really would because, you know, if somebody's got a sensitive skin, then they need to invest in it. And that is the number one thing. If their skin is sensitive, yeah, okay, go to the shop and get simple. Brilliant, because they'll come to you in about a month's time and they'll be even worse because simple is full of alcohol. And simple is simple. It's exactly that. That's what you use, is it? Oh, God, Danny. Um, that is why simple is simple. It really doesn't contain anything. Yeah, 99p, nice, cheap and cheerful. <laughs> There's worse things you can put on your skin, Danny, as long as you don't use Clinique, because then we'll be having words. But no, the simple itself is okay to a certain extent, but it doesn't have anything in it that's really going to help your skin. And if you look at the ingredients, it is full of alcohol again. So that's that's something that will really, really aggravate sensitive skin. And actually, it's something that will aggravate any skin. Imagine that rubbing alcohol on your face. I mean, think of the effects it has on your body when you drink alcohol, how you feel the next day, how much we feel like we're again in the, in the desert. We have to drink so much water to counteract the alcohol. That is why, because alcohol does strip, it drains everything out of our body. So um, again, so yeah, I would recommend getting the whole calm range because all of it is really going to help to boost and um, to heal the skin. And as I say, as soon as they've finished the calm range, move on to something else. Because when people say, oh, you know, I have got a really sensitive skin type, as I say, it's it's not a skin type that you will always have. It's just a condition that you need to treat. And with skin types as well, another thing I'd just like to add, I'm going to give you lots of useful tips tonight. But the other thing I'd add just before I wrap up is that, oh, going again if you have a combination skin and i know this is going against everything that is in the shops and what they tell you but i have done really advanced skincare training and i do specialize in skincare 
you cannot get an oily and a dry skin. There's no such thing. If you have a dry skin on your legs and you tend to get dry arms, you have a dry skin type. You cannot get a dry and oily skin. There's no such thing. You can get a dry dehydrated skin and you can get an oily dehydrated skin. But what you have on your face, you have on your legs, you have all over our skin is our largest organ. It covers the whole of our bodies. So you can have oily all over. You will be really greasy all over. If you have dry skin, which most of us will have um, in the UK, because as I say, it is a cold country so we do tend to be more prone to having a very dry tight um, irritated skin um, then you have that all over your body as well so um, that is my last tip for you all I hope you found some value in that and if anybody does have any questions then just give me a shout wow I'm like sat here and I'm like, my gosh, that girl is going to go places. Just amazing, Laura. Absolutely amazing. Not only is your knowledge extensive, you deliver information in such an easy, easy to understand way. And I just think, I just think it's great. I just think you are, a fa oh, you're a fantastic person and you're such a giver as well. You've just given so much information to everybody to help them understand. And you've gone above and beyond like you always do. I was absolutely phenomenal. There was a couple of questions. Um, Sammy, did you want to ask your question to Laura? I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, I just wanted to ask what we recommend to use for a, a UV protection with the Calm Range because it doesn't have SPF in the moisturiser, does it? Mm, no, it doesn't. I mean, to be fair, to have a separate um, SPF to go over the top wouldn't be a bad thing. Doesn't Arbonne have a specific um, sun care range? Because I would maybe say to put that, is that right, Danny? Don't they have yeah. a specific sun care range? I haven't really looked into their sun care range, but I believe that they do have a um, individual one for the skin. And actually, for a sensitive skin, that'd be a really good idea because you're building up the layers. If you imagine when you get dressed and it's cold outside or we're going to protect our skin, we're going to put our layers on, we'll put a T-shirt on, a jumper on, a coat on. The more layers you put on your skin, the more protection that you're adding. I mean, the other option is that when they put on, um, say, for example, a BB cream, there's an SPF in that. So that's another option as well. So they could put on a bit of makeup. Anything is good, to be honest. So any protection is great. Yeah, and I, I would I would go for the translucent setup. Fab, thank you. Mm. Sorry, was someone going to say something? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, definitely, Laura. Like what Laura just said, the sun cream um, or one of the makeup ranges, or if somebody just wants something really light, so the translucent powder that's got SPF in it, that's what I would probably go for. Um, Heidi, did you want to ask your question? Yes, if we've got time. <laughs> I'll put it in the notes just in case we hadn't. Um, what I was going to ask is my mom, the unbeliever, she's got um, like quite big pores on her face and she always, for as long as I've known her, has used like an oily skin product. If she used, I know, see this is what I'm thinking. <laughs> if she used a dry, one for like dry skin, if I give her my um, FC5, a dry one for a couple of weeks would the pores shrink down or because it's been so long will they just stay like they are um what, so what so she uses products for oily skin what range does she use uh, i don't know she changes and changes all the time okay um, and she's always always used an oily skin range as long as i've known her yeah <laughs> Or as long I mean, as what, I, what I would say, I would say anything is good and it's never too late to look after your skin. That's what I would always say. As soon as she starts using something that isn't oily, she is going to go, oh my God, my skin feels amazing. Like, I can't believe I didn't know about this sooner. Like, honestly, she will. So, I mean, I, does her skin feel sensitive or agitated at all? Uh, no, I don't think so. She's got, a, a, she's never really had have a problem, but I know the rest of her skin. So like she uses a 24 hour moisture all over because she's got such dry skin but then she uses yeah. oily stuff on her face so i'm just thinking and she's always moaning about these big pores she's got and yeah I so i would definitely say yeah so definitely go for the fc5 nourishing and make sure that she exfoliates really well because exfoliation is absolute key because her skin probably is really dry and what happens is if we don't exfoliate our skin then you will waste if you're investing in products you might as well not bother because your dry skin literally right. sits on top of dry skin and sits on top of dry skin and some of it will shed off and go to house dust but if you don't exfoliate 90 to 95 percent of a moisturizer is just wasted on dead skin so really good exfoliation for her and um just 
just make sure that she's using a good cleanser, no soap, nothing like that, nice cleanser, and then a nice rich moisturizer and put it on before she goes to bed because our skin rejuvenates itself while we sleep. So the most best time to heal your skin is at nighttime when we're sleeping because anything you put on it is going to speed it up. So yeah, that's what I would suggest, definitely. Oh, lovely. Thank you very much. (laughs) Welcome. Total superstar you are, Laura. You really, really, really are. That was a great training. Thank thank you. Thank you very much. It's all right. (laughs) Okay. So, right. We would have had Emma Wood, District 100 Qualification Emma Wood training next, but she has had an unexpected emergency, so she's not able to be on the call. So what she said she's going to do, because she was going to train on skill number one, which is finding people to speak to about your business. She said what she's going to do instead is record it and post it onto the uh, the Facebook page that we've got. Um, and she just sent her apologies. So what I thought I'd do for the next five, 10 minutes is do a training with Heidi. Heidi doesn't know this. Um, <laughs> that me and Heidi did at her house on Friday. Is that all right, Heidi? You know the one we did about the goals? So you can be my person I'm asking. Is that okay? Right, let me unmute you. Okay, so this is a training that we did the other day. Um, and it was it's I think it's gonna be really beneficial to everybody. So I'm gonna ask Heidi some questions and I've got my whiteboard and it's all about setting goals, so setting appropriate goals. So bit of a role play without Heidi knowing that this is even gonna happen. Okay, Heidi, can That's you fine. can you tell me in December? So we're gonna go with your December goal, okay? So in December, so December the 31st. 2017 do you have a goal in mind where you want to be with your business on that date december the 31st 2017 do you have like a really big goal where you want to be with your business is this like my massive stretch goal yeah my massive stretch goal would be region qual region qual so i'm going to call that your a goal so a means this is your big goal so region so rvpq so region qualification is 40,000 QV. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, that's fabulous. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm also going to give you, for the exact same date, a B goal and a C goal. So I want you to tell me, so I can put into your C goal, what your goal is for December the 31st that is going to happen no matter what. So this is not a big stretch one. This is just no matter what. What is going to happen with your business on the 31st of December? Uh, that one will be uh, maintain an area, so 10,000 QV. So an area, maintaining at 10,000 QV. So if you were to not put a lot of effort into your business, between now and the end of the year, you promise that your business is going to be in maintaining area 10,000. And that's if you don't really put a lot of effort in. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and your B goal, so for the same date, is something in between. So what's your in-between goal? Um, a bonus in area manager. So 20,000 and 10 no. So bonus in area manager, which is 20,000 plus 10 no. Okay, so this is Heidi's plan for the end of the year. So ideally she wants to hit goal A, you know, that's her ideal. But the point of setting three different goals is because a lot of people set themselves a big goal for either the end of the month or in six months time or in 12 months time or five years time. And what happens is sometimes we don't hit that big goal. And what happens to ourselves is we beat ourselves up and it starts to chip away at our self-belief. It chips away our confidence. And if we're constantly not hitting goals, even if we were really close anyway, we are negative to ourselves about that. And I think we can all say we've experienced this in anything. So weight loss, healthy eating, business QB. There's been times where we've set ourselves a goal and we haven't hit it. And even if we were close, we're like, oh, you're worthless, you're rubbish, and you can't do this. And we give ourselves so much grief for it. And eventually, we don't feel worthy enough because we're not hitting those goals. We, we keep setting ourselves. So the idea of setting three goals is that no matter what, on that date that we've set for Heidi, she's going to hit a goal. So if she doesn't hit her A goal, which is a big stretch goal, that most people only set one goal for a date. If she doesn't hit that A goal, she is no matter what going to hit that C goal. So no matter what, she's going to hit her C goal. And she's going to feel good about herself. She might look at this on the 31st of December and go, right, I'm not in regional vice president qualification, but I did hit my A goal. And I'm proud of that. And you should be proud of that. You've hit A goal and that's fantastic. Or she might hit B goal. 
or somewhere in the middle, and that's great. So if you set yourself three goals for every date that you decide, you can do this every month, you can do it every six months, every year, doesn't matter. Whenever you set yourself a goal, set yourself three. So your A is your big stretch goal. Your C is no matter what. No matter what, this is happening, and B is something in between. And then on top of that, so there's a little bit more, is you're going to commit to doing something. So Heidi, I'm going to ask you, there are 52 weeks a year. How many yep. days a week, roughly, do you work on your business? Uh, five. Okay. So Heidi is committing five days a week to your business. And obviously, there's 52 weeks a year. And of course, I'm sure you'll have holidays in that time, which is absolutely okay. I'll allow you to have a holiday. <laughs> um, so five days a week, what do you commit? Because everybody's different. So are you following some sort of system? And if you are, I want you to tell me, what do you promise and commit to doing that is going to enable you to hit this goal by the end of the year? Well, on everybody knows the tracker, the top bit I will do every single day, no matter what, <laughs> I will do that every single day. And then the extra bits like underneath, I don't know if it's only going to show us the tracker. Yeah, I'll get the tracker up. So your, your system that you use is the tracker. And people might use different systems. That's absolutely fine. Whatever your system is, just make sure you know what it is. So this is what Heidi's talking about. Go on, Heidi, carry on. Yeah, so above the yellow bit, that is my no matter what, five days a week. Obviously, the weekly bit as well. Um, they are my next bit. So the top bit is my no matter what. The bit between the yellow and the green is... Well, actually, some of that is no matter what anyway, but um, some of it is my next one for like my B goal and the optional extras, that is probably what you need to push extra for the stretch goal. But personally, I try and do as much as I could and I'd build it up. Okay. So this top bit here, you commit to doing yeah. that five days a week, yep? Yeah. yeah. How long does it take you to do this top bit here? Uh, depending on the length of the audio, but you could easily do it in probably an hour. And then obviously the audio, it just depends how long the audio is. But I think if you said an hour a day, it'd average out to about that. Okay, so I'm just going to stop the screen share. So for you to hit your goal on the 31st of December, your commitment to working towards that goal is five days a week. You're going to spend one hour of those days doing your tracker which we've just looked at so you that is your commitment to this goal yep yep okay that's great and everybody's might be different that's absolutely okay but you have to commit to doing something to, to build towards your goal yep. you can't just set a goal and do nothing you have to commit to something so Heidi what I want you to do is every weekend I want you to have a look at your system that you're using so you're using the tracker every weekend that you look at your previous week if you have not stuck to doing what you said you were going to do, so if you look at your tracker and you only did two days that week, what yep. you have to do is move this date back a week. So your date is the December the 31st. So if next week you look at your tracker and you didn't do what you said you were going to do, which is one hour a day, five days a week of that tracker, if you didn't do it, you have to move this goal back by one week. Do you understand? Yep. Sounds like I'm telling them off, doesn't it? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so what happens is when we set ourselves a goal sometimes we set ourselves a goal and we don't do anything towards it we just set a goal and think oh well I hope that'll happen you need to commit to doing something towards that goal and it doesn't matter what it is that you commit to doing but you need to commit to doing something so Heidi's committed to do the tracker and some people on this call might do the same but you might be somebody that uses a different system that's absolutely okay it doesn't matter what it is that you decide to commit to but you have to commit to doing something to reach this goal and then you have to agree that if you don't follow through, there is a consequence to your lack of action. So I'm the same as Heidi. I use the tracker. So every week that I look at my tracker and go, oh, gosh, I didn't follow through with what I said I was going to do. I have to, even though it's painful, move my goal day back a week. And what happens is every time you keep moving your goal back a week, it's painful. It's like, damn. 
And you then subconsciously start to um, agree that you need to follow through with what you said you're going to do because there's a consequence to your action. And um, it's like, and I, and I liken it to weight loss because a lot of people can relate to this. It's like saying on December the 31st, I'm going to be a size eight and I'm currently a size 12. So I need to stop eating this many calories. And I need to exercise. You can't not do anything and then get to two weeks before then and go, I'm going to be a size eight in two weeks. It's not going to happen. You need to consistently stick to what you said you were going to do to get to this goal. And if you do set yourself a weight loss goal on this day, every week you don't do what you needed to have done. You need to move that weight loss goal back a week and then back another week and back another week until eventually you do start doing what you said you were going to do. So Heidi, was there anything you wanted to add to that? Um, the only thing I'd probably add is I think personally to be at my seagull I need to be doing the included in that needs to be like the one-to-ones and stuff because obviously otherwise nothing's going to happen <laughs> yeah. yeah so you're so for this day I would include a certain amount I don't know how many I'd include a certain amount of like one-to-ones product events per week per month etc yeah so you've got this day you've got your three goals yeah. And then you've got your commitment. So your commitment is five days a week, one hour a day of your tracker, plus some one-to-ones and some group events. Yeah. I think that's fabulous. So what people could do is that you can do your own one of this for the end of the year. So you can write down your date. So December 31st, write down three goals. So A is your big stretch goal. C is you know, no matter what, this is what's going to happen. And me and Heidi did this with another consultant on Friday. And her C goal, no matter what, her C <laughs> goal, was just to turn over 150 QV. And that's okay. It doesn't matter what your goal is. Just make yeah. it applicable to you. And um, so that was her sea goal, turn over 150 QV. And she committed, she'd made her commitment and decided to commit to that. And so every time you don't commit to it, you have to move it back a week, move it back a week. So you can do that for the end of the year. You can do this for every month. You can do it for every six months. But every time you set yourself a goal, do it in this format, if, if this fits in line with you. So three different goals, one date and what your commitment is and then every seven day review it if you didn't do it you've got to move your date back another week so that was my training for this did anyone want to add anything to that Heidi did you want to say something yeah I actually do want to say something because sorry <laughs> just wafted in um when we did it the other day we did a monthly goal a six month goal and a year goal I actually think that's really, really good because if you miss a week, you've got to move your monthly goal, you've got to move a six monthly goal, and you've got to move a yearly. That's going to be much more painful <laughs> than thinking, oh, December's ages away. Yeah, <laughs> so true. So, so, so true. Right. Okay. So that wraps up our area training for tonight. So there is the nine o'clock call in a minute. That's been hosted by National Vice President in Qualification, Fiona McCarthy. If anyone needs the code, this is it 337. Six zero zero um zero eight five nine. <laughs> right, thank you so much everyone. I'll see you all on the nine o'clock call. Bye.